Hi guys, a sudden death of the most liberal Supreme Court judge Ginsburg creates another political drama in US. The question now is whether Trump has a moral right to appoint a new judge before the election, or should the new president fill that seat? AOC even made a speech about that. And so we need to make sure that we mobilize on an unprecedented scale to ensure that this vacancy is reserved for the next president. And we must use every tool at our disposal from everyday people, especially in swing states. The reasoning of the Democrats is the following. Back in the February 2016, when the very conservative judge Scalia died, all Republicans were against Obama appointing a new judge before the elections. I want you to use my words against me. If there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president, who it, whoever it might be, make that nomination. And you could use my words against me and you'd be absolutely right. We're setting a precedent here today, Republicans are, that in the last year, at least of a lame duck eight-year term, I would say it's going to be a four-year term, that you're not going to fill a vacancy of the Supreme Court based on what we're doing here today. That's going to be the new rule. The next justice could fundamentally alter the direction of the Supreme Court and have a profound impact on our country. So of course, of course, the American people should have a say in the court's direction. I don't think we should be moving forward on a nominee in the last year of this president's term. I would say that if it was a Republican president. President Obama is eager to appoint Justice Scalia's replacement this year. But do you know in the last 80 years we have not once has the Senate confirmed a nomination made in an election year and now is no year to start. This is for the people to decide. The seat was not filled back then and only in April 2017 Trump appointed a new judge Gorsuch. Now the situation is exactly the same but on the other side. Plus Ginsburg's last wish was not to be replaced before the elections. The media basically tells us how Obama was nice back in 2016, allowing voters to decide on new judge, and how Trump and Republicans are bad and immoral. Which is true in some sense, but that's not the full story. First of all, Ginsburg back in 2016 was not against replacing Scalia before the elections. She said, there is nothing in the constitution that says that president stops being the president in his last year. To become a Supreme Court judge in US, current presidents need to appoint someone and then the Senate should approve this candidacy with the majority of votes. If president is a Republican and Senate is controlled by Republican, that's a very easy task. Back in 2016, the situation was different. Obama was Democrat and Senate was controlled by Republicans. That's why they were able to block a new appointment back then. Now we have Trump and Senate is controlled by Republican. There is absolutely nothing to stop to fill that seat. That's why the situation is completely different. As you know, there are nine Supreme Judges in US and they are all appointed for life unless they decided to retire. Now let's check whether Republicans always appoint conservative judges. Currently five out of nine judges are appointed by Republican presidents and four out of nine appointed by Democratic ones. In June this year, Supreme Court rules that federal anti-bias law protects LGBT workers as well. This decision was written by Trump's appointed judge Gorsuch and supported by another conservative judge Roberts. As the result, case was approved by six judges out of nine. In 2015, the Supreme Court ruled that same-sex marriages are recognized on federal level. Again, there were five Republican judges and four Democratic ones. Nonetheless, one of the Republican judge Kennedy wrote the case and the issue was approved by five out of nine. Another weird thing, do you know how many Republican appointed judges were during the first Obama administration? Seven out of nine. There were Stevens who was appointed by Ford and there were Souters who was appointed by Bush father. You might say it was the most conservative court in the world. Well, look at the graph how different judges were conservative or liberal over time. Both of these judges were extremely liberal. Why it's like that? The simple answer is during their appointment, the president was Republican, but the Senate was controlled by Democrats. So they can't really propose any crazy conservative guy. Now even more weird thing. Three of the current Republican judge was approved by Republican Senate, but there is one who was approved by a Democratic one. This is Judge Thomas. Guess who's the most conservative among them? Yep, the guy who was approved by Democratic Senate. 
I would speculate they played a race card here and appointed a black guy. Telling Democrats, would you oppose a black Supreme Court judge? And Democrats like, no, no, black lives matter, systemic racism, obviously we will approve this guy. This time Trump will propose a woman to make it hard for Democrats to find some arguments against and the most important reason to protect against Me Too. The last judge who was appointed by Trump, Kavanaugh, was Me Tooed by three different women. And one of the fake story was that 35 years ago one of the female was touched by Kavanaugh when she was deadly drunk at some student's party. And she can't really remember this, but some of her friends told her that story. Basically, these fake stories delayed the appointment by three months, and now we still have four months before the end of Trump's term. So most likely the new judge will be approved, unless crazy Nancy Pelosi decided for a new Trump's impeachment. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you in the next episode. Bye!